Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Alien Wars Lawless and the Saint. Last episode we talked about what gave the players the physical differences and found out it wasn't really that great. And today we're going to be diving into the mental edge and finding out what really gives them that difference. Hi hey guys, we're going to be going to the LCS to talk to a local sports psychologist. Let's go. Got off of uh, one of the LCS promotion games, so I'm coming down here to talk to you and I appreciate you coming out here to talk to us. Thank you, good timing then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so. maybe you can like help me out. I'm like exhausted from that mentally. I'll take a deep breath and we'll get into it. Okay, so. <laughs> you're already helping. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Like, what do you do as a sports psychologist? So I'm a sports psychologist and a licensed professional counselor. And so I work with a lot of athletes, but performers in all demanding endeavors in terms of peak performance, uh, dealing with adversity. So it might be slumps, mental blocks, sometimes injuries, and then also any interference that's affecting them in their performance. So it could be personal issues or family issues, those kind of things. So let's say you were to help me. So let's say I was having problems with practicing, I guess, or I had other things on my mind, or I felt like I wasn't getting the right practice, like the practice didn't feel good. What's some of the things you could do to help me out? Well, I think one thing in terms of practice is you want to practice like you play and then play like you practice. When I work with performance, it's actually making training or making practice twice as important. And then when you get to the competition, uh, downplay it, minimize the magnitude. Because uh, usually we psych ourselves out. And the key is you want to psych yourself right. So yeah, like I want to win this big match. And exactly. You're building it all up to that big match. You're, you're making it bigger than life. And so you want to shrink it back down to size. So in the off season or when you're training, think about, okay, what do I want to accomplish? What are my big goals? Why am I doing this? That's your motivational fuel. But when you get to the competition, um, it's just, you know, been there, done that. Just trust my training. If we take Michael Jordan, for example, a point in practice for him was just as important as a point in Game 7 of the NBA Finals. There's no difference. Now, that doesn't mean you're... It's so like hard to, to reach that, that, that mental, I, I want to say fortitude. I think. Yeah, and, and that's why there are not that many Michael Jordans. Uh, but he would get in fights during practice and because he was taking it so seriously. And a lot of times people would say to him, hey, it's just practice, calm down. And he said hey, nothing's going to get in between me and my competitive urge to win. All right, Jim, really great talking to you. It's been really insightful. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate you coming down here. And uh, maybe you'll have a chance to work with our team sometime. I'd love to. Thanks for the opportunity. It's great talking with you. We just talked to Jim Afromo. He helped us figure out how to practice to get ready for the big game. Now let's go head over to Pepperdine University and talk to somebody who runs that practice. Hi, hey guys. I'm here at uh, Pepperdine University with uh, Ryan Weisenberg. He's the head coach for the women's basketball team here. Uh, Ryan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I, this is my third year, going into my third year at Pepperdine. I started as an assistant coach, um, second year as a head coach, and we're looking for big things this year. We're in a transformation, um, so we're rebuilding and putting some pieces together. But as a basketball coach, uh, I started in 99 at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo as an assistant basketball coach on the men's side. Um, and I duped my way into being uh, uh, going in with the Lakers as my first real job. Um, so in 99, I got to go down and I was the video coordinator and assistant advanced scout. Is that like the, the whole money ball thing? Yeah, oh yeah, really totally. Just to get into like every little aspect of it. I, I knew way too much about way too many players. You know, my mental Rolodex is completely full right now. So, um, <laughs> and it's from past players. But uh, we would, we'd watch a lot of basketball. Um, I basically would help my immediate boss, Chris Badakin, who was the advanced scout and video coordinator, um, develop player tapes for our, our players, scouting reports for our coaches, um, and we would basically deliver that to them. They would go through it. They would be up and ready for uh, our upcoming opponent, and um, from there, they would present it to the team, and they would work their game plan off the information that we gave them. We actually talked to a, a Minnesota Vikings player, and he was telling us uh, how how much like video work they do? Um, they do like more video work than they do like actually practicing almost because you know there's like physical limitations of the body, and you can't really go out and like practice your hardest every single day or else you're just gonna have fatigue. Do you guys do the same thing with uh, basketball your basketball team where they just 
video work, video work, video work, and then you go and you like do what you practice for from that? Or Yeah, we, um, a little bit different. I was lucky enough to start with uh, Kurt Rambis and Dale Harris with the Lakers in 99, and both of them were video junkies, and that was when we had the VHS tape. So um, Kurt Rambis, I know going into the playoffs in 99, had us break down every single player, every single play, um, and every single defensive tendency of the, uh, the team that it was Utah. Um, before we played them. And so we were literally giving stacks of VHS tapes in the locker room. So Shaq got a stack of tapes. Kobe Bryant got a stack of tapes. Um, it was like we were creating the tape fortress in the locker room, but uh, they watched it. Um, and then Phil Jackson came in and he's a completely different beast when it comes to video. He's a big video person, but it's more in blocks. He wants to watch game pieces. So he'll go from the three minute mark to the eight minute mark and want to watch it fully with little bits and pieces cut out. And then he would throw in a movie clip. Um, big things were like the Three Stooges, like slapstick <laughs> stuff. Yeah, just random crazy stuff. Um, so my job was to watch movies while watching players and teams and find comical, you know, um, Super Troopers was one we pulled a ton of good yeah, clips out. Um, and we'd throw them in randomly. So you'd be watching the game and all of a sudden you'd have a Super Trooper or, or uh, you know, something come up and the guys would... It, Just to take the edge off. Yeah, it takes the edge off, keeps the focus on what they were doing. Um, but we would, because there's 82 games in a season and you, you're really playing three games a week and you, you don't want to wear out guys' legs like Kobe's legs. So we would spend about an hour and a half to two hours of video. They would go out on the basketball court for about an hour and go through walkthroughs, and then they'd also do weightlifting and strength and conditioning stuff. Um, but video is real big. Uh, guys like Kobe Bryant would ask for, I would say, a good hour, hour and a half of tape on the, the guy he was going to defend and who was going to defend him, so he knew everything like about it. straight researching the opponent. Yeah, so we, we spent a lot of time of taking clips and taking game film, and uh, so video is absolutely huge. Let's switch things up, guys. We're going to go into the strategic side of things and talk to a local chess grandmaster and coach. We're here at the American Chess Academy with Coach Armin and Grandmaster Chess player Taltiv. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm uh, founder of American Chess Academy and international master uh, since 2004, I'm teaching U.S. youth national team, taking them to the world youth. One of the coaches of the U.S. national team, taking them to the world youth and Pan American Games. My name is Tatev Abrahami and I started playing chess when I was eight years old, so I've been playing for 18 years now. Uh, I'm a woman grandmaster and I'm one of the highest rated women players in the country. And I'm the current runner-up for the U.S. Women's Championship and I'm also a member of the U.S. Women's Olympic Chess Team. I'm sure you have to play against a lot of other grandmasters, people that are equal skill level with you. Um, how do you deal with the, the pressure of that? Um, let's, I understand in chess, like you make one bad move, and the game's almost done at that point, right? Or and not done, but it's really difficult to come back from. Like, how do you mentally deal with that? How do you prepare for that? Uh, well, I think the biggest preparation is just to go into the game and be ready to play a long game. And even if your preparation is good before or your preparation is not good, you're playing someone strong or playing someone weak, just to be ready that regardless of your group, even if you're playing someone weak, they can still play a really good game against you. And if you go with the expectation that you're going to win then and then your opponent's playing well, it gets really frustrating and all of a sudden you start losing. Um, you know, you kind of feel like things are not going your way, it gets very frustrating. And as far as mistakes go, there are several mistakes you can blunder and that cost you the game. There are mistakes that like you can go from a better position to a worse position or from an equal position to a slightly worse position where you have to defend. So it's very important to it's very important that your mental state is in the right place. So when you're playing you're still ready to play a long game. So even if you're slightly worse then to like adjust your mentality and re realize that the nature of the position has changed. So you still, if you're winning and all of a sudden you slip and you're not winning anymore, you don't keep pushing for a win. You realize I'm not winning anymore. I better find the best move. So I think it's best to approach the position, the game always. Like every move, you're just trying to find the best move you can find. Not any kind of expectation. I'm trying to try to win or I have better preparation. I'm just gonna crush my opponent. I just mentally be ready to play a long game. So it's almost like you're playing against your opponent rather than playing the game of chess also. Yes. So very strong players like, you know, just people like Bobby Fischer who become a world champion, the greatest American chess player ever. So he was playing all the time, the position he was trying to find the best move. 
regardless who, who's playing with, you know, just. But for some players, it's so impossible, you know, because if they play with someone hard, they have different strategy already. They are scared, you know, just they are not doing, because losing chess game is very painful. I have to tell you that's 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 the worst thing. So when you play five six hours and then you lose the game, it looks like you know just you're someone just overplayed you or or you kind of feel like you're idiot, you know, just losing the game, you know, just after doing your best and all that preparation. It's really painful. And some people, you know, just so you have to adjust yourself. You have to learn how to lose, how to win and lose. And, you know, just winning also sometimes get emotionally so high that the next day you cannot play normal chess anymore. So it's very important for the years and the experience you're getting like balance and trying to control everything. Positive emotion and negative emotion and just becoming more professional. Well, uh, Coach Herman, I want to sure. thank you. This is really, thank you really very insightful much for and yeah. Good luck uh, you. in your next tournament. Thanks for talking to us. We talked to a lot of great coaches today, and I hope you guys just understand how important it is to be in the right mental state when you go into a game, or even when you go into a practice, and just how important that practice is. But uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Alien Warriors, The Lawless is the Saint, and we'll see you guys next episode. Huh, Steve, you're not bad. <laughs> Jesus, so much pressure. No, no pressure, you just relax. Yeah, just chill. <laughs>